Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access a Trader.com uh, night Lee update show up everybody is doing well they had it help everybody had a great three-day uh weekend whether you celebrated easter or not hopefully you got some rest some quality time uh with family with friends with loved ones again at the end of the day uh that is what it's all about uh if you are brand new to the channel guys thank you very much for everyone finding us um you know the only thing we ask if you enjoy the content take a second uh, hit the like button, subscribe, share, and all that good stuff. And I'll try to really uh, give you an unbiased take of the market on a day-to-day uh, -day, uh, basis. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, Friday, the market was closed. It was a uh, good Friday, but there wasn't uh, any data that wasn't, um, that wasn't uh, left out, right? Always has to have data. Data always comes out. Uh, traders, whether the market's open or not, are always going to uh, try to digest it, and they're going to try to figure out what happens next. Uh, Friday, the PCE uh, data came in, and there was a brief Q&A uh, session with Sharon Powell. He basically said it was in line with expectations, and when you woke up this morning, right, you saw the futures, NASDAQ futures up 100 points, everything was surging. The Dow future is up. Everything was big. Everything was great. And then yada, 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 here we are. Dow closed down 240 points. S&P uh, down 10. And the NASDAQ finished off slightly in the green uh, 17 points. But the, the biggest issue of what we're continuing to see here, uh, especially if you've been you know, an active participant in the market, is kind of this sideways pattern. Uh, it, again, it's not a bad thing. The, the last thing you want to turn around and try to read a little bit more into it but if you look at the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven closes of the NASDAQ 100, you'll see five of them are red closes, which basically means a red candle, which basically means a close that is lower than the open. And you had uh, two channels, right? You had two channels uh, that were right in the middle of the channels. And the, the point is what I'm trying to make is the buyers and sellers are kind of comfortable here. That's, that's not a bad thing. Uh, the bad thing is if you're an active trader and you're looking for 95 subs throughout the day, you're probably not going to get it. That's why we always try to, uh, you know, try to specialize in one specific group, especially the heavyweight uh, mega cap technology names. But the point is when the market rests, you rest as well. Luckily for us, uh, we had some uh, pretty aggressive pivots, uh, especially at the open today. And the market literally did nothing else. Uh, for the rest of the day. But the most important part is the sideways action is continuing to give us very definitive lines in the sand. So for example, to the downside, if you were watching uh, the video the last, you know, in the last week, you know that last week's lows is going to be a definitive factor kind of going forward. Uh, this 441.93 area to the downside, and we have this whole channel here above 448. So 441 uh, 90s to the downside, 448. The upside, as you can see here, we're right in the middle. Now, what does that middle need, right? There's only X amount of time the digestion channel can play out, right? Eventually, somebody has to take a step forward, whether it's the bulls or the bears, but somebody has to take control. It looked this morning that it was going to be a runaway train. Matter of fact, if you look at the first bar here, right? If you look at the first bar here, uh, literally at the open here, let me just show you. Forget about this one here. Let me just get rid of this one. Uh, refresh all. Okay. So if you look at the initial bar tay, we just had this one big move up. Literally, the Qs went from 445 uh, all the way to 447 on one bar. The problem is the next bar, they gave it right back. And now we're right back into this middle distribution channel. And the question is, well, how long is this channel going to last? Distribution is kind of an ugly word. Uh, if you've been watching this broadcast for many years, you kind of know that's like the ugliest word in a trade of vocabulary because, again, there's not enough strength to push stocks higher and there's definitely not enough fear uh, to push them low. We're kind of stuck in the mud here. Fortunately for us, like I said a few minutes ago, it's all about individual trades, not about the dynamics of the overall market. That, the distribution channel usually lasts about a week, 
week and a half tops. We're going into what, day eight tomorrow? So we're approaching a two week period of distribution. Something eventually has to come in, right? Something eventually has to give here in this pull and, pu and pull and push type of scenario. It's almost like a game of chicken. The question is, can you be mature enough if you're an overall market savant, right? If you're an overall market participant and you trade random these, the hot stocks today, can you really sit there afford to try to trade the hot stock of the day when the overall market is kind of sleeping? And that's a very, very honest question. For us, you know, I trade primarily 10 stocks, right? 10 stocks 90% of the time. So they're always going to give us a channel both to the upside or to the downside because they have such a big average true range. But if you are trading like, you know, at any random stock, like a Lowe's or a Target or a Moderna, you know, sometimes you'll get, get that really good move. But most of the time, trading random stocks will give you random results. And this is why I kind of like today, and we will get to the pivots in a second. But going into tomorrow, we, we do have a little bit of catalyst to potentially get us some pretty good trades. And let's talk about that. Number one, you have Tesla's delivery numbers coming out, I believe, in the next 24 hours. I'm not really sure exactly when. I think it's going to be tomorrow uh, before the market open. And I'll tell you, we've been, we've been talking about Tesla for a long, long time. Today, we caught a nice pivot on Tesla to the downside. But there's not a lot of enthusiasm, guys. It, it, again, you can be the biggest Tesla bull in the world. There's just not a lot of enthusiasm going into tomorrow's session, right? You, you see a slew of brokers kind of take down their estimates. I saw um, I saw last week, I forgot who it was, somebody took them down from 500,000 uh, delivery number to like 465. Uh, you got a lot of really stale price targets on the stock. So I, I think from, for Tesla to really kind of get out of this doldrum, it really needs to knock it out of the park or to have such a, or in an in a other scenario, kind of have such a horrible number that everybody's so numb to the number that it rallies off the lows. But the problem is if the numbers get received as a stalemate or get received at face value, and they start taking down today's channel, yeah, the stock's going to go lower. So it's very, very important. Uh, one notable thing that we did not see today on Tesla ahead of their delivery numbers was major bets. We really didn't see anything to the upside. Yeah, we saw some 175s, you know, 75 calls. We saw some 180, uh, 180 calls. We saw some 170 weeklies. We saw some 165 weeklies. But we didn't get that institutional runoff one after another after another to kind of give us a, a you know at least a, a, a feel of what Wall Street predominantly institutional flow is obviously thinking. But again, it's not about what they're thinking. It's not about uh, our opinions. Again, like I said for years, you know, there's a million opinions. There's only one confirmation. So tomorrow we have the top of the channel we were watching from two weeks ago, and we have today's channel on the on the downside. Something's going to give tomorrow. At least this will give us uh, some sort of pretty good trade tomorrow, one way or another. Nvidia. NVIDIA now has been uh, sitting in this little channel here for the last three days. You can see it. It's it's literally holding on to this rising support. Uh, it's literally been defended in the same area three days in a row. Uh, like we talked about on the weekend video, it needs to either lose the 20-day moving average or get above the 5. As you can see here today, it got rejected off the 5 but held the 20. So again, another one of those stocks that because the market is going sideways, because there's distribution, something eventually is going to give, right? It's either going to reclaim back the five-day moving average or lose the 20. Again, I have pivots on both sides. The one thing that we did see on NVIDIA today versus what we didn't see on Tesla, they actually did come back with some pretty good aggressive bets. We saw some weekly 920s, 940s. We saw some end of the month 970 calls. So at least we started seeing some institutional money flow. The problem is they took the stock red of the day at one point. It was down like eight, nine points. Granted, it held the bottom of the range, but now it's, again, still stuck on stupid, just like the majority of the NASDAQ 100 names. Matter of fact, if you look at the NASDAQ 100 names, there was only three or four that were green on the day. Everything else is going sideways. One of those names was Google. Google, you know, we talked about this on the weekend update, finally broke out of a multi-month uh, multi channel. That's a very, very rare thing uh, to see in this distribution cycle, but here we are, right? So uh, Google got above this 153.78 level, which was the January 29th highs and closed within 20 cents uh, of the highs of the day. Again, very, very good looking chart.
One chart that we talked about over the weekend that was not good looking was Reddit, right? So Reddit had a great debut, had a nice run, and now it's basically teetering around the IPO lows. If you saw today, and we talked about on the on the weekend video, well, if this thing starts closing below the IPO lows, there's going to be a problem, right? Houston, we don't have a problem just yet. But if Reddit tomorrow starts losing today's channel, yeah, I think there's more downside ahead. So you're kind of in this holding pattern of a dynamic move on the overall market, but it's okay. We don't trade the overall market, right? We don't trade the stock market. We trade a market full of stocks. And that's exactly what we have uh, going into tomorrow. So let me give you guys a couple of ideas uh, for tomorrow's session uh, that I definitely like. You know, some some long, some short, mostly mostly short. <laughs> mostly short just because everything is moving up. Again, Reddit, uh, I really like Reddit for tomorrow. It's going to get off of SSR. Uh, I think it's going to get off of SSR tomorrow, short sale restriction. Uh, if it loses, keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow, guys. If it loses today's channel tomorrow, it should have another leg down. Uh, look at Lululemon. Uh, they blew up on earnings about a week ago. It's just going sideways here. You know, if it starts losing the bottom of the channel of its earnings lows, you should see the next leg down. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Google, like I said, broke out today on from the January channel. That's very, very bullish. Um, I'm going to use any weakness tomorrow into rising 60 minutes support to try to get a balance of this thing. This thing looks really, really good. So I'm watching this thing either tomorrow for a bounce into weakness uh, off of a 60 minute channel or a break above today's highs for a potential move to this 158 level. Uh, that looks really, really good. And Tesla, again, Tesla is going to give us uh, some sort of trade tomorrow, uh, whether it's going to be to the upside, to the downside, we don't know. Uh, this is obviously based on the numbers that will be delivered. But again, when you have such a low bar, and that's one of the things, uh, if you guys remember a couple of quarters ago, maybe two, three quarters ago on Netflix, there was no enthusiasm on Netflix. Everybody knew their subscriber growth, uh, at least in the States, was starting to slow down because of the password sharing. So there was no expectations. There was nothing ahead of their earnings and they came out with a nothing, a nothing burger type of earnings. And because there was so little expectations, the stock rallied. Is it possible that happens tomorrow with Tesla? Of course it's possible. There's a shot. But the way Tesla's been trading, the way the stock has been kind of losing back, uh, back testing into support and almost lost the 10 day moving average today on the close. Again, it's going to be very, very tough to impress the shareholders, the impress uh, the traders tomorrow. So they better come out with a gangbuster delivery number or we're gonna there's a good chance tomorrow we're gonna have a conversation about a pivot that we took that hopefully will end all the way down here uh into this bottom bollinger band other than that uh you had a really good uh aggressive session today uh in the morning again not a lot of things triggered but you didn't need a lot of things today that was the whole point uh, again you only need one we have this uh acronym yono right you only need one just because on beta, when you catch one, they're not good for 20, 30 cents. They're good for two, three, four dollars. That's the whole point of trading uh, the mega cap technology name. So uh, Tesla was good today. Uh, 175.30, uh, if it builds below, it can flush. Here was Tesla. It took out the 75.30, lost the five, the 10, went all the way down to 170. Guys, I'm telling you, watch this channel for tomorrow. Uh, if the if the news is the if the uh, if the deliveries are not received well, it starts losing today's channel. This thing is going to backtest. Uh, a lot more. So watch uh, Tesla for tomorrow. Uh, Arm, I was watching for a flush, never got there. Uh, Google, again, broke out huge. 152.25 needs to build. Google, just a massive, massive move on Google uh, right from the word go. Took out the 52 and a quarter, took out 53.78, the January highs, and yada, yada, yada. Here we are almost at 156, uh, 156 uh, into the close. Uh, Square didn't confirm. JetBlue never confirmed. Boeing never confirmed. The only one confirmed, oh yeah, Reddit. Reddit got smashed. Uh, 49 and 48 pre-market lows if it builds below can flush. Uh, Reddit went all the way down to the lower uh, daily Bollinger Band of 4430s. Again, this thing starts losing 44, guys. This thing is going to have the next leg down. And Meta was also on the open. The problem with Meta I couldn't get it. It was just way too thin. There's no liquidity. They took it down like four or five dollars before a pretty good reversal. And if you didn't trade today, right? 
this is kind of a this is kind of the morning summary today. This is a, a chart on Nvidia, but this is pretty much a chart on everything, every technology name today. The market shot up out of a cannon, and then it just went completely belly flop right on the way down. So uh, again, good session. Uh, we were desperately waiting. Well, not really desperately, but I think every active trader is at least ready uh, for the market to kind of pick and choose. Aside, we've been in this distribution cycle for about a week. It should end in the next day or so. And when it does, we'll have a lot more clarity to which side the market wants to go next. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.